Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and this is the dedicated astronomy camera I used most in 2020 and the images I took with it knocked my socks off. Here is an image I took of the Orion Nebula using the QHY 268C from my light polluted backyard. Pretty sweet, right? Well, for almost $2,000 US, it better perform really well and fold your laundry. The QHY 268C is a one-shot color dedicated astronomy camera. This camera uses the back illuminated Sony IMX 571 APS-C format CMOS sensor. I was loaned this QHY 268C from QHY directly. I was not compensated in any way, nor do they have any say in how I review this camera. There is two versions of the QHY 268C, the photographic edition and the professional. I've got the photographic here, and the biggest difference between the two is that the pro version has the fiber optic cable connection for even faster transfer speeds. So just looking into it now because I didn't have that version, if you do want that professional model, it's even more expensive and you have to buy the grabber card to connect the fiber optic cables, which is another thousand dollars. So it better be worth it for you to get that version. This camera is only available in a color version and has a pixel size of 3.76 microns. On all of the telescopes I tested the QHY 268C on, this created higher resolution images than I was used to with my previous one-shot color dedicated astronomy cameras. This camera also features an impressive native 16-bit ADC with zero amp glow. It produces very low dark current and read noise depending on the mode you're using it in. I've captured all of the images with this camera in the native unbinned full resolution format. This creates massive 12,000 pixel wide images when drizzled in the stacking process. Now that is big enough to print some massive posters. The QHY 268C has a bigger brother, the 600C, which looks extremely impressive. So rather than listing out all of the specs of this camera that you can read yourself in the product description, how about I share some of the images I took with this camera in the backyard? In the past, I've used a lot of color cameras. The ZWO ASI 533MC Pro, the 294, my Canon EOS RA, and of course, all my older DSLR cameras. I'm not gonna lie, I can't see the differences in full well capacity directly. The conditions in my backyard are just too variable. The changing light pollution, the weather, and of course the moon phase. I will say that the QHY 268C is definitely the best color camera I've ever used for astrophotography, even if my favorite camera is still the Canon EOS RA, which is a bit irrational. It's also the most expensive dedicated astronomy camera I've ever used due to that larger sensor and impressive capture speeds. The images that come out of the camera are about 60 megabytes each when unbinned one by one. To fire off 100 times 10 second exposures and to quickly get the transferred off the camera onto your computer is really amazing when you think about the limitations in data transfer in the past. The two gigabyte DDR3 image buffer makes this possible and it's built into the QHY 268C. There are three capture modes out of the box for this camera and I've shot all of my images in the photographic DSO mode. There's also a high gain mode and extended full well mode. The preset settings on the photographic mode are a gain of 102, offset 76, and again I've shot all of my images that way. But looking into it, I should have done some more experimenting knocking down that gain setting. A lot of people say that using a gain of zero is the smartest way to use this camera. Installing the software and the drivers for this QHY 268C were a breeze, no issues there with connections or anything like that, and I've run all of my imaging sessions through Astrophotography Tool. I've also heard others having success using this camera with Nina and SharpCap. 
Seeing as how this is the latest APS-C one-shot color camera from QHY in 2020, it's no surprise that the images coming out of it are some of the most impressive I've ever seen. The pixel size is small at 3.76 microns, and it's just such a great fit for almost all of the telescopes that I use for astrophotography. I was especially impressed with the images coming out using the Esprit 100 refractor at 550 millimeter focal length and the Esprit 150 at 1050 millimeter focal length. I've been using this camera a lot with duo narrowband filters like the Optilong L Extreme and the quadband filter, the Radian Triad Ultra. And to me, that has been the most useful way to use this camera just due to my light polluted skies. I'm also really excited to try this camera using just a UV IR cut filter for some broadband data on a moonless night. That's one thing you should note about this camera. There is no built-in IR cut window. It's just the anti-reflective window. You'll need to use your own UV IR cut. A camera that takes images this big and this high resolution is only as good as its ability to successfully transfer these files safely to your computer. There were no hangups thanks to this USB 3.0 connection and of course that image buffer. Image scale is something you'll want to consider if you're looking into this camera and that calculation is dividing the pixel size, in this case 3.76, with the focal length of your telescope times 206 and you're aiming for a value of about 2.0 for a well sampled image. In my experience, if it's a bit undersampled, going over 2.0, that's actually a good thing. You'll get sharp images. If it gets a little too blocky for your liking and you're no longer recording round stars, then it's time to scale back. But in general, I find going over 2.0 slightly is not a big deal at all. I've seen exceptional results using this camera and the variation from Altair Astro of this sensor on a Red Cat and just stunning results. So the bottom line is this was one of the easiest cameras to review of all time because it was just such a great experience with zero headaches. The big question is, if you're looking for an APS-C sensor format, dedicated astronomy camera, a one-shot color, are you gonna get the QHY268C or that ZWO2600 with the same sensor? One of the biggest differences, I think, is that your existing hardware, if you're shooting with the ZWO ASI Air and the EAF autofocuser, it's a pretty obvious decision what to go with. One difference I know between the ZWO version of this camera and the QHY is that the image buffer is two gigabytes on the QHY 268C and 256 megabytes on the ZWO ASI 2600. Probably not an issue if you're taking long exposure deep sky images as I do, but maybe it could come up if you're doing more EAA video style stuff. A few subtle differences in the included items as well. So the QHY268C has an M54 adapter, whereas the ASI2600 is an M42. There's also a nice adapter ring on the QHY268C that comes off with three screws that allows you to easily rotate the camera and put a filter in there if there's no good spot in your imaging train. I really appreciated that feature. I also like the included 12 volt power brick that came with this camera. It threads into the back of the camera so you can lock it in and it's a nice long cable and a quality power brick. So just little things that I appreciated. This camera is expensive, but it really does future-proof yourself to an extent for a few years to come because it is such an impressive camera with advanced features that you will appreciate for a long time to come. To me, a great camera needs to have a suitable sensor. I don't really like the small sensors that really crop in the field of view. So a crop sensor APS-C is plenty wide, creating those large 6,000 plus pixel wide images. And of course, those data transfer speeds have to be quick. No hangups in capturing images. That's really important to me. And this camera really delivers. I personally want to experiment more with different gain settings and shorter focal length telescopes like the Radian Raptor. 
I've seen others having a lot of success using this camera on something like the Celestron Rasa as well. It's got that perfect body size and weight to be mounted to the front of the telescope for hyperstar or Rasa imaging. So there's lots of potential with this camera. I hope you found this review of the QHY 268C useful to you. If you're looking into this camera or its competitors, at the end of the day, you're probably gonna choose the option that makes sense for your existing configuration. But I think if you are looking into the QHY 268C and you're looking for a vote of confidence to put you over the edge, Two thumbs up from this guy over here. Really love this camera. It's gonna be sad to give it back to QHY when they ask for it back. I think in the summer, maybe I'll work out a deal to buy it off them, but so far it is the best dedicated astronomy camera, one-shot color I've ever used for astrophotography. And until next time, clear skies.